Hey gang, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be building a desk for my buddy who just moved into a new apartment and he's been gaming on the floor. His back is hurting a little bit, so he approached me and asked if I could build him a custom desk that looks awesome and would also last him a long time. Of course I said yes. Immediately I got to brainstorming ideas for this desk, what I wanted it to look like, how I wanted to tackle all the different pieces and parts of the build. So we got in the F-150, we headed on down to our local supply store, and we came out of the store with three two by sixes and one sheet of plywood that was pre-primed and pre-sanded. Now, when we got back to the house, we unloaded all of the materials, and our first step of this build is to cut the sheet of plywood in half because the leg design that we're going with requires us to laminate this sheet of plywood and double its thickness and strength. Also, we're gonna be designing the legs and see how those take shape. So let's get started. All right, gang, it is the next day here at the house. We have our two plywood boards here. They're laminated and glued super strong. We're excited about that. So now all that's left to do is to remove all the screws that we screwed yesterday. After we remove all of the screws, we're gonna come use our Festool track saw with our 55 inch Festool guide. And we're gonna be cutting these as accurate as we can. Pretty much what a CNC would be doing, um, but we don't need a CNC because we have a track saw. If you guys don't have a track saw, I think the next best saw would be a jigsaw. Yep. It's relatively inexpensive and it's incredibly versatile. We're actually going to be using a jigsaw to finish off the cuts that the Festool will not be able to get. We'll also be using the Festool guide to finish off with the jigsaw so that it's as straight as possible right. and we get the best result. So without further ado, let's get all these screws out and get these legs cut out, huh? Yep, let's, let's do, do it. it. Alrighty guys, and there you go. We have the majority of the leg cut. The track saw did a great job. So now we've got the jigsaw out and we're gonna finish these cuts. It looks good on this side, but if you flip it over, that's what we have to connect. We have to connect all those lines. So we're gonna be doing that with the jigsaw. Yep. And we decided that we're gonna take the jigsaw and we're gonna be doing this section first because we wanna see if we need to use a guide or not essentially. So we're gonna freehand it. If it looks bad, we're gonna use a guide. But if it looks good, then we're just going to send it. Yep. Let the blade stop yep. before you come out. I nice. think we're going to be fine. Yeah, I think that looks great. You want me to put a square on there? Yeah. <laughs> In my handy dandy toolbox. Look at that. Okay. 
All right. That looks really good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome. Cool, dude. Right. Let's, let's send it. Yep. As Jordan says. All right, dude. There's one. That looks awesome. A for awesome. Yep. <laughs> and then, I mean, look at this corner. It hardly needs any sanding. Yeah, the cuts were super smooth. Mm -hmm. well, Very minimal. And especially where we transition between the circular saw and the jigsaw. Right, track saw. Because you can see right here, it got a little bit. Just a little bit, yep, but yep. I mean. But for the most part. It's a custom build. It's going to have a couple little character flaws, you know? All right. Cool, let's dude. Cut off that other one. All right, let's get that other one done. All right. All right, gang, so we have our second A cut out. It came out great. I mean, they're super similar. We did run into a couple problems, though. Not problems, but just, you know, a uh, little, little discrepancies, I guess. The first one being that this bottom of this A was a little bit thicker than this one. So we just ran the track saw across the bottom, trimmed off a little bit of the fat, and now they're perfectly similar. So that's good. Now we got to address this. You can see from the lamination process, we've got a little bit of a lip here. The glue created a little bit of a lip. So we just got to chop it off with the miter saw. It's nothing the miter saw can't handle. So in order to assure that we have the same length on the bottom, if you come down here, you can see the design that we went, went with. There's a little bit of an angle right here. So we, we measured this, this little gap, this distance, and it came out to be 15 16 And we actually chopped this off with the miter saw. So it's perfectly flush right there with the laminate. So we're gonna come to the other side here and we just got our tape and we measured that and make sure that it was 15 16 and this top edge is just barely 15 16 so I'm gonna get as close to this as possible and uh, chop it off. So let's head on over to the miter saw and chop it off real quick, huh? All right, so now that we have the bottoms trimmed, we're gonna set the miter saw to a 10 degree angle because with our design, we don't want this to be 90 degrees. We want a little bit of an angle. We think it would look cool. So we just set it at 10 degrees and we're gonna chop it off. So dad's lining it up and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger. Nice. Cool. And we're using the drywall square right here, guys. It's making it super easy to span the entire gap of our leg. That's our, this is our center line of the... Right. Yep. So it's 11 and 7 eighths on both sides. To here so and to, here. to here and to here. So we're just going to go 11 and 7 eighths on the miter saw and chop it off at 10 degrees. You know what these remind me of? What's that? The big A at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. Oh, yeah. Remember when we went there with Mr. Mark? And you can already tell here that just that little angle alone makes it look so much more finished. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. So we're just going to transfer those marks. Yep. I'll hold these together if you want to. Transfer them, mark, yep. and then let's cut them. Alrighty guys, and the legs are done. It, they look awesome, man. I mean, the angles that we chose, the design overall is super awesome. All the cuts are made on these legs. The only thing that's left for these guys is a little bit of sanding and some painting, probably a clear coat. We're not gonna get to that just yet. The next step of this project, I'm trying to make sure that these don't fall. I'm just gonna lay this down. Come over here. The next step of this project is to actually joint these three two by sixes that we bought. We're gonna have to mill them, run them through the table saw. We're gonna have to joint them, and then we're gonna have to glue them, clamp them, the whole process. The buddy who asked me to build this desk for him, he's a bigger guy and he plays a lot of games. So I wanted something, you know, I wanted something that he could, that will last him essentially, you know? Something he could pound something on. Something that'll take a little bit of a beating, you know? So we made sure we structurally engineered these legs and we got the two by sixes that we're gonna make nice. But as you can see behind me, it is dark outside. We've been working all day. And this desk is just a fun project for us at the end of the day. So we will catch you guys tomorrow for the joining process. All right, gang, it is the next night, as you can see behind me. It's really cool to be able to come out here and create stuff after hours, after the day is done, after we've done everything we gotta do. But let's get down to it. We've got these two by sixes and they are 12 feet long. And the idea is that we're just gonna cut them right in half so it's a six foot long desktop. So let's go ahead and just cut these suckers in half. All right, let's do it. All right, we have all our two by sixes cut in half, and now we're gonna joint the edge. Now, we don't have a jointer yet, right? <laughs> right. 
but this track saw does a beautiful job of cleaning up the edge of a board. So we're going to use it and we're going to try that method. So we're going to rip one edge and get rid of this, these radius corners as it comes out of the mill. And after we're done, we'll have a nice crisp, crisp corner. And then we're going to run it through the table saw and we're going to see how it works. I think, it, I think it'll be fine for this project. Me too. Let's try it. All right. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. That's nice. And that was so easy. We may just cut the other side with this instead of getting the saw out. Right. Because we know this is straight on the table saw. Any little wobble against your fence. Let's cut one side of all six and then we'll plan our next step. Cool. Alrighty guys, we have all of the boards cut, at least one side, and we've decided that we're gonna run them through the table saw, and we're gonna go five and an eighth. So we're cutting about an eighth off, more or less. So all those are ready. We've got the table saw set up here with the outfeed for the exhaust going to the driveway because we don't have dust collection in here yet. I left the back. And, yeah, and the masks are on because we left the shop back at the job site earlier today. So <coughs> that's a lot of fun, but we're ready, huh? Yep. All right, so we just got to run these through the table saw and uh, let's get that done. All right, we ran the second side through the table saw. Pretty good with the equipment we have, don't you think? Yeah, it looks awesome, winter? definitely. Yep, so our next step is to we're going to cut some biscuits for alignment when we glue this together. And then on the ends here, you'll see that this is a pretty typical method of gluing up boards. So see the growth rings here? So the bark was out here where my hand is. And this one, the growth rings are going the other way, so the bark was at the bottom. And bark on the top, bark on the bottom, bark on the top. So they just alternate. That way, any movement of the board kind of cancels it out. Sure. And what Jordan and I are talking about is gluing this up tonight. And there's a great big cabinet shop down the road. They do doors and everything, custom-made doors. We're going to see if they can run this through their planer for us. Absolutely, which hopefully we can fill. Yep. So that'll be that'll be cool. But And we said we're going to do six biscuits. Yeah. All right, let's lay those out and cut them and glue this up. All right, guys, so we have all our slots cut in our boards. It turned out great. And we're using a size 20 biscuit here made by DeWalt, but you can go with any brand if you'd like. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the biscuit and we just kind of shoved them in there just to kind of clean out all the sawdust that the biscuit uh, joiner leaves because you don't want to be stuffing your biscuit in there with a bunch of sawdust in there, right? So we cleaned them all out. Looks great and we're ready to glue. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe off the table, put a tarp down, that way we don't get glue on our brand new workbench, right? And we're gonna glue this thing up, clamp it together and see when it's all done, all right guys? bud i think it looks awesome i mean for some framing lumber and minimal tools like it looks great yeah. they're definitely not straight but we're gonna try and take it to a cabinet shop tomorrow and oh. have them run it through their planer oh, so you mean like this one's cup like for, is that what you're talking about right yeah we couldn't help that yeah but glue ups are relatively simple that went together great it did and you can even see this this line right here this triangle that we drew just so we can keep the orientation the same the through all the different processes the way we laid it out right we put it back together right but we have three clamps on the bottom three clamps four, on the bottom or on top not not too tight nope you don't want to over tighten it and that was also definitely not the best way to apply the glue no. that was pretty primal honestly 
<laughs> hands are clean. Yeah, just some gloves and <laughs> that was fun, dude. So we're gonna let this dry overnight, take it to the shop tomorrow, and see if they'll let us run it through their planer. All right, that'll be kind of fun. Let's clean up. This see what mess. happens. All right, dude. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right. All right, gang, so the next day, Dad and I set out to find a shop that had the tools we needed to get this desktop looking the best it possibly could. We get our trim and doors from a local company, so we figured we'd shoot over and ask if they knew anyone who had the machines that we needed. Turns out, they had a custom door shop a few miles away with a massive industrial belt sander that they were graciously willing to let us use. The owner's son, Jacob, met us at the shop. He was incredibly nice and willing to help. I want to take this opportunity to encourage anyone watching this to consider taking this approach when building a custom DIY desk or tabletop. And when you're working with rough lumber from the hardware store, it is near impossible to get a professional and even looking slab using only common tools that you might have in the garage. There is a lot of misleading information out there saying that it can be done. The closest you might be able to get is using a router flattening jig, but even then that is a lot of time and dust. Take a few minutes to research custom door or cabinet shops in your area, head on over and ask if they'd be willing to let you use their equipment. In our experience, most people are more than happy to help and it will propel your project from good to great in minutes. Jacob, he helped us out today. Jacob's with Trimco Millworks here in Baton Rouge. He ran that slab through their thickness planer and it came out beautifully. We sure appreciate it, man. Absolutely, thank you, brother. Thank you, you awesome. anytime. Y'all come around, video it, um, <laughs> see how we do things. Uh, you guys are in Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge, Shout Louisiana, out down, um, down South Choctaw, it's Trimco Millwork and Supply. We do construction supply. We have all the, the custom millwork stuff, shutters, windows, doors, um, the whole nine yards. All right, guys, we're back here at the workshop. We've got the desktop here on the table, and it looks phenomenal. I've actually got to finish the rest of this project on my own because Dad is on his way to Florida currently. But we've got this sucker right here. It looks incredible. Jacob did a great job at the shop. Future Jordan, go ahead and roll some footage of how this desktop is looking right now. So the next step on this build is going to be to sand the two legs behind me and this desktop right here. We got the vitamin D. The sun is absolutely beaming inside the workshop right now. This shouldn't really take that long. So let's see if we can get this all sanded before the sun goes behind that house. All right, guys, we just got done with the orbital sander. We had a 120 grit disc on the bottom of that orbital sander there. We're gonna go ahead and swap over to this sheet of sandpaper. It's 220 grit. The reason I'm going from 120 to 220 is because the desktop was already pretty much sanded by a very coarse grit through that drum sander at the, at the shop. And this plywood that we cut these legs out of actually came pre-sanded and pre-primed. So it's pretty smooth off the bat. So that's awesome for us because sanding is not the most fun. But what we're gonna do with this 220 is we're just gonna make light passes on this top to get it as soft and smooth as possible. We're also gonna go over these legs. We're gonna break the edges of the plywood just because it's kind of sharp and from cutting it with the track saw, we've got you know, different uh, burrs coming up and we just want it to be smooth. We don't wanna be giving anybody any splinters in that regard. Also, as far as the orbital sander goes, and this is speaking from past experience, when you're sanding a desktop, you wanna really keep in mind making light and even passes uh, because if you stay in one spot for too long what's going to end up happening is you're going to start to get waves in your wood because if you want to work out a knot or you want to work out a specific part of the wood um, it's going to create a noticeable crater or a noticeable divot so just make sure that when you're going in with the orbital sander or even if you're hand sanding it you try and stay as even as possible because it does make a difference in the long run with that being said let's go ahead and take this 220 and get the rest of this sanded Alright guys, so the legs are all done and the edges are all broken. It feels great, no splinters, and it looks great. But before we can tackle the desktop and break the edges and get it ready for stain and 
poly and all that good stuff we have to trim it because as you can see these edges don't line up just from gluing it up the glue up process so what i've done is i've taken this square and i've gotten the track uh pretty much square with the rest of the desktop and it looks good i've got it clamped down so it doesn't move on me because i don't have dad here to help me hold it down or anything like that we got the tracks all ready so let's go ahead and chop this edge off chop that edge off get two clean edges and then we'll finish sanding it sick all right so now that that step is done we've got everything trimmed and it looks awesome we're gonna go ahead and take our sandpaper break these edges sand the edges and it'll be all ready for the finishing process so let's get started guys so the desktop is prepped and ready to go for the finishing process and this is personally my favorite part of the project so we've got our desktop here all of the sawdust is removed we use the bristle brush on the vacuum as you guys saw in the previous clip and you can use a bristle brush on a vacuum you can use a tack cloth a rag just anything to get all of the sawdust off and the first step in this process is we're gonna be, uh, be using a pre-stained wood conditioner now this stuff is Essential, you guys have heard me praise it in the past, like on our bed video, but I never stain wood without applying this first. What the pre-stained wood conditioner does is it just prevents a blotchy stain application. If you've ever just taken stain to a board without using this stuff in the middle, you can definitely tell a difference. Um, and if you're not convinced, I encourage you guys to do a test where you have a two by four or a two by six of pine, sand it down a little bit, and you guys will really be able to notice a difference, but there's also more videos on YouTube and stuff like that. The point is, pre-stain is a must, especially in my finishing projects. So what we're gonna do is we are going to apply this, let it soak into the wood for about five to 15 minutes, and after that's done, we're gonna come back and wipe off all the excess and apply our stain. Right, guys and now it is time to apply the stain so what I'm going with for this project is a Minwax semi-transparent natural wood stain the reason I'm going with natural and semi-transparent is because I actually want the desktop to look exactly how it does right now I love this natural look it's got an awesome sheen coming off of it and I want to maintain this so I don't want to add any color and I don't want to really alter the wood in any way because like I've said in other previous videos I like the way pine looks when it's all dressed up so I'm gonna go ahead and crack this boy open and we are going to apply the stain. All right, we're just about finished. And you guys always wanna make sure that when you're applying the stain, you're doing your best to apply it in the direction of the grain of the wood. Just a small thing that sometimes makes a big difference. All right guys, and there it is. The stain is applied and I already went ahead and took a clean rag and wiped most of the excess off because I wanted to keep it as light as possible. And it just looks so good. I'm so happy with it. There was a toss up between a couple of different stains and I decided to go with the natural and I'm so happy that I did. This looks awesome and I'm so excited about it. Now it's a waiting game. On the can it says that you should wait a minimum of four hours before you apply the top coat and protect it. In our case we're using that polyurethane. So before we can apply the polyurethane we have to wait 
And in my experience, I've gotten impatient and I've tried to like, you know, four hours and four hours on the dot, you get out here with the poly and you start wiping it on there. But I've learned that it's better just to wait a day, a full day. So I'm probably gonna come back, you know, tomorrow afternoon, give it a good 12 hours minimum to soak into the wood and dry up before we apply the poly. It is pretty late here, so I'm gonna have to catch you guys tomorrow. All right guys, it is the next day here and the desktop looks great. The stain is fully dried, so now we can go ahead and on with the next step, which is applying the polyurethane. It is a clear satin, fast drying, min wax polyurethane. And when we're applying this polyurethane to this desktop, we're essentially just stacking layers of protection as if we were stacking pieces of paper. It's a desktop. I want it to be as durable as possible, so we're gonna add minimum of three coats of polyurethane. And this stuff usually takes about half a day to dry before you can apply the next coat, which means that we gotta get started. So in order to apply it, I'm gonna be using this large foam brush. These things are like a dollar max, 79 cents at your local store. And I've had the best result with these foam brushes. No need to get fancy with any paint brushes or anything. Just make sure that you're applying it evenly, which I will show you guys. Um, but we got no time to waste. So let's crack that can open and apply this poly. Alright guys, so the desktop is pretty much completely covered in our first coat of polyurethane. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start at the edge and I'm going to drag light pressure, not too hard, in a straight line from one edge to the other. And I'm just overlapping about halfway with my passes. That's why it's good to get a bigger brush. And I'm just essentially pushing all the little puddles of buildup off towards the edges and then the same buildup that's running off over the edges is what I'm going to use to apply the poly to the edges if that makes sense. All right guys the first coat of poly is on officially and it looks awesome. So what the first coat of poly is doing right now is it's actually seeping into all the little cracks and crevices the knots the little dimples in the wood which is why it's important to do multiple layers because the first layer is going to add a little bit of protection but it's more so to get a nice and uniform surface on there. And it looks great, I'm really excited about it. And we got the legs over here, they're all sanded, they're ready to go, the edges are broken, I can do this without getting a million splinters, it's awesome. For the legs, we're gonna be using the spray paint, it's the Rust-Oleum Flat Black, it's gonna look awesome. And then to, uh, to seal it, we're gonna be using the lacquer. So let's head outside so we can spray these suckers. Alrighty guys, so we are outside and this is the setup I'm using to spray paint these legs. I've just got it attached from the bottom, I drilled some holes right there and I've got those screws going into these scrap pieces of plywood actually the same plywood we use for the legs so it's secured that way I can get both sides in one pass and uh, we got the paint ready so let's, let's waste no time let's get started All right guys, the first coat of black paint is on the legs. It looks okay. I'm not super excited about the way it turned out, but it is just the first coat with spray paint. A lot of the times I like to dust it on and it really starts to come together by the second or third coat. So I'm gonna be patient. To paint both of these legs, it did take a full can of black spray paint. So I am gonna have to run to the store to get more. No worries, but uh, we're definitely gonna be back. We're gonna give this two or three more coats and then go ahead and spray that lacquer on there. All righty guys, it is the next day. We've got multiple coats of flat black spray paint on the legs. And we're gonna go ahead and use this Minwax Clear Lacquer. It's the clear satin version. Uh, again, just didn't really wanna go for the high gloss finish. We've already sprayed one coat of the lacquer on there, probably gonna go two or three more. This stuff dries incredibly fast and it's really easy to apply multiple coats in a short amount of time, which is one of the reasons why I'm using lacquer. But let's go into the garage and see how that desktop is doing. And oh my gosh. Dude, this came out absolutely amazing. When you run your hand over it, it's completely smooth, minus a couple of air bubbles and little dust nibs that settled, but that's what we've got those white pads over there for. But you can just see the lights coming off of this thing, get an idea for how it's gonna look, the final product. It looks incredible. 
I'm so excited about it. Now we're gonna take these 3M pads. These are actually final finishing pads. These are in between pads, between coats pads. But now we're gonna switch over to these final finishing pads. You could also use a really fine sandpaper to do this, but we're just gonna go with the 3M pads because I've had the um, better luck with, with my uh, projects with these white pads. And so we're just gonna go ahead and kind of buff it, man. We're just gonna rub it like this and get all those little you know nibs off, all the little air bubbles, just like that, man. So let's buff this thing out and see how it turns out after we're all done. Hey gang, I wanted to talk about a few things I failed to mention in the finishing process of this desktop. Let's talk about why I decided to use an oil-based polyurethane instead of water-based. Oil-based polys are less expensive, which factors into me keeping the cost down of this desk for my buddy. Oil-based poly also contains a higher percentage of solids, which essentially means the finish is more protective. And a more protective finish leads to less maintenance over time. You'll also notice with an oil poly, it leaves an amber glow to the wood, which with the right stain or wood really gives it a warm and rich hue, which some people are after, and in this case, so was I. The only downsides here are high odors and extremely long wait times in between coats and after the final coat. Sometimes it's four hours, sometimes it's 12 hours. For me, I had the time and I had a dedicated room I was building the desk in, so the pros far outweighed the cons for me. Do some research on the two and maybe even buy a small can of each and give each a try before you decide to commit to one or the other. I also failed to mention that I applied a few coats of poly on the underside of this desktop. This is very important as leaving it unprotected results in warping of the slab due to outside elements being able to get into the wood. I would seal the bottom first, flip it over, and then focus on making that top looking as good as you possibly can. All right guys, so as you can see, I've got the legs up on the table, the desktop is upside down, and it looks awesome. I've got a couple coats of lacquer on the legs uh, pretty easy, just apply two coats, might go three, but it feels pretty nice and it looks pretty nice and I'm feeling confident about it. So now what the plan is, is I'm going to be securing the two legs to the desk. I want to flip the desk over, set it on the ground and see how stable it is. I know it's going to wobble a little bit. We've got an extra two by six and that's actually the next step of this, bro uh, this project is to attach this two by six to brace the legs and to give it a little bit more stability. Um, it also serves a couple of other features, but I'm going to save that till the end of the video to show you guys. So let's go ahead and screw these legs to the desktop. I'm going to be using a two inch pan head Phillips to secure the legs to the desk. Um, Phillips because it's common and you can get in there with a screwdriver if you need to remove it. Uh, just common hand tools thinking about who's getting the desk. You know, not everybody's got a drill and stuff. So if they have to remove it, they can use a screwdriver. Also, the pan head is going to grip the recess that I have inside of the leg. I have it so there's a step inside of there. So that way the pan can sit on top of the wood and push the two pieces of wood nice and tight. So let's go ahead and secure this down, flip it over and see how it feels. All right guys, so we have the desktop attached to the legs and it looks absolutely incredible. And if you wanna come over to the front, you can see that here in the back, I've got this two by six, the spare two by six that I've put across the legs to kind of span the gap. That two by six is gonna serve two purposes. The first purpose is just to add a little rigidity and the second main function of it is to actually act as a cable raceway. We're gonna be mounting a power strip on the back that way, the only cable that you see coming off of the desk is one black extension cord to power the entire desk, all the computers and the monitors that are gonna be sitting on top of this thing. So that's really exciting and I love the way it turned out. You can see that we clipped the edges and it looks awesome. But a fatal design flaw on my part was that I thought that this desk was gonna be strong enough just with these legs and that two by six, but I was wrong. If you see here, I can with one finger take this desktop and you can see how wobbly it is. It's very wobbly and it's creaking when I'm doing that. So I don't want to do it too much. So you can imagine with a bunch of weight on here, it'll probably be a lot worse. So that was an engineering flaw on my design or my part. So what we came up with was we came up with these cross braces. We actually just, uh, I cut these off camera. Wasn't too exciting, but what's happening is I used the spare laminate plywood. This is the same wood that we used for the legs. So this stuff is very strong and I just cut a two inch wide strip. And then I ripped uh, on the table saw, or actually it was the miter saw. I cut one, this angle's at 40 degrees, and this angle's at 50 degrees. And what that's gonna allow us to do is it's just gonna go like this on the back. Just like that, on both sides. So I've already tested it, and I know that it's incredibly strong, and I really wanted to test it before I you know, put anything on camera. I did this all off camera just because it was a, kind of a, 
a testing process and usually I like to have it all figured out before I hit record. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. I can show you guys a couple of details once these are attached, how we attach them and, and what they look like and I can show you guys the difference. So just, you know, that's how wobbly it is now. Let's throw these legs on there and see what a difference it makes. Alrighty guys, you can see that we've got the two braces attached on the back. There's just one screw in the middle of each one, one going into the desktop and one going into the leg. It looks awesome, but more importantly, check this out. Like if I push it, like that thing is not wobbling at all. Just two pieces. Um, I cut them at, I believe, 32 inches long. And the reason I went 32 inches was because I wanted to have the largest triangle possible. I debated on keeping them short just to have a lower profile, so maybe coming at a steeper angle here. But in order for it to be as strong as possible, I wanted the triangle to be larger. So I just went with the larger length. And I was a little afraid that it might compromise the design a little bit, but I'm actually really thrilled with how it turned out because I think every angle complements each other. You've got all these different angles back here. You've got the angle of the cross brace, the angle of the A, you've got the angle of the top of the leg, the angle of this two by six, and it's just really chiseled. It's almost like an Aventador, like a Lamborghini Aventador. Like it looks awesome. There's just so many angles and I think it looks really good. I'm really pleased with it and it's very strong. So now we're gonna throw it in the back of the F-150 and we're gonna take it over to my house, which is where I'm going to be showing him the desk for the first time. So let's go over there, set the desk up and uh, get his reaction. <laughs> oh, dude, that's actually nice. I see what you did. You made it look like the letter A. <laughs> dude, that is gnarly. I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty guys, that is going to be a wrap on this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. The desk turned out incredible. It looks good and it feels even better. Hopefully my buddy is going to be getting a lot of use out of this thing. And again, I just couldn't be more pleased with the way it turned out. This video is not necessarily a how-to or a tutorial video. It's more so documenting the process on how we tackle these types of projects. You know, coming up with an original design and knocking it out and building it, creating something out of some plywood and some two by sixes and how we go about that. So hopefully through the steps that you saw and throughout the video, you got a couple of ideas and were able to gain some inspiration based off of the things that we do. And if you can make any improvements or would have done anything differently, definitely be sure to let us know in the comment section below. And with all that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video for us. We really appreciate the support. And consider subscribing if you guys are into this type of stuff. We love doing these DIY builds and we're really hoping to get more of this uh, type of content out in the future with our workshop that we're you know, reclaiming the garage for. So stay tuned for that as well. And we will go ahead and see you on the next one.